Products in this video were provided to the author to do a review. All opinions are 100% authors and authors alone. Hey guys, this is your friend Iggy back again. Today I'm going to be doing a review overview of the WD Black SN750 1TB NVMe M.2 PCIe SSD. Some of the performance on this drive are going to blow your mind. I know they blew mine. So, this has sequential read speeds up to 3,470 megabytes per second, supposedly. We'll get into that in one second. And then sequential write speeds of up to 3,000 megabytes per second. That's pretty fast. So then it also has random read IOPS up to 515K and random write IOPS of 560K. And then it is based off of the NVMe 1.3 standard not 1.2, 1.3, and we'll get into that in one second. Then to top it off, it has a five year limited warranty. Now, I tested this drive alongside the Patriot Scorch 256 gig NVMe M.2 PCIe SSD, as well as the Samsung Evo 850 500 gig SSD, and then also the WD Black 512 gig model number SSD WDS512G1X0-00ENX0. Now, I threw in the regular SSD just to give you guys an example of how much potentially faster an M.2 is over a standard SSD. Still a fast SSD, but we'll get into that in one second. The WD SN750 destroyed mostly all of the drives. Some cases tripled, other cases quadrupled and even quintupled some of the scores. So now then getting into crystal disk, we can see the SN750 destroyed the other drives on sequential Q32T1, both read and write, 4KIB Q8T8, both read and write as well, then fell behind to its older brother, the WD Black NVMe 512 gig, not by a ton, but enough that it did win in both read and write, and then again, beat everyone else on the 4KIB Q1T1. So we can see the performance is there already. So that's pretty nice. Now, Edo, we can see the performance is just about the same, but oddly enough, well, it beat all the other drives in all of the scores minus three. You can see here the Samsung 850 Evo, the standard SATA drive, beat the SN750 on 512 byte, one kilobyte, and two kilobyte test. Now mind you, if you're using Notepad, the Samsung 850 Evo is your drive of choice because you can copy and write to it, open and close those Notepad files in a flash faster than no other drive, and you're gonna do it all in record time. But if you stop using Notepad and now use Word and all these other more advanced programs, the SN750 still might be your choice, video encoding, gaming, and all that good stuff. Now, jumping on to some boot tests, we can see three of the four drives all boot to Windows in about 10 seconds. They all booted to the desktop in 14 seconds, beat by the older brother, the WD Black NVMe 512 gig by one second coming in at 13 seconds. The overall boot score, however, was won by the WD Black NVMe 512 gig, coming up above the Samsung 850 Evo by 0.39 seconds. The WD Black 1 terabyte trailed behind by 0.7 seconds, and the Scorch was the engine that could coming in dead last at over two seconds above the WD Black NVMe 512 gig drive at 26.203 seconds. Now that's gonna sound like a lot, but again, if you're looking at the image, the overall image, you'll see that that's not totally a lot. Now, the Z390 seemed to boot a little bit slower than even the previous Z370, but mind you, not by a lot, you know, five seconds or something along those lines. You probably wouldn't really notice. Now. We're just purely talking about the drive itself. The others, the other drives don't really have software. Mind you, the older brother, the WD Black 512 gig drive has a variant of this software. And the Samsung 850 Evo has another variant of this software. 
some nice extra features, but this drive also has some nice features because of the NVMe 1.3 standard. The Western Digital SSD dashboard, you can see on the screen here, shows you all the drive stats, performance monitoring charts, tools that allow you to download and update the firmware, erase the drive, SMART drive diagnostics, and advanced drive information shown here. Then also some drive help resources and shortcuts to Windows Disk Management, System Properties, and Device Manager. The tools though are mostly all shortcuts and I'll get into that in one second. Now, testing the temperature of the drives, I know that's in a lot of your minds. The hottest this got was 70 degrees. Now that's testing with Crystal Disk and then the very second it finishes Crystal Disk, I throw on some ADO. ADO actually heats up the drive even more or even quicker I should say. I threw in Crystal Disk first just to prime the drive and keep it hot for then when ADO starts up, it already has that heat, the momentum, and then um, you know the drive gets hotter. So again, it only hits 70 degrees. Now, Western Digital with this dashboard created a gaming mode. Now, the gaming mode falls onto this 1.3 standard. The power management is controlled by the NVMe 1.3 spec through its non-operational power state permissive mode that manages the maximum power draw and latency in each of its multiple operations and non-operational idle states. The host controlled thermal management feature allows the whole system to specify two temperature thresholds. Then in speaking to Western Digital, they mentioned that the max temperature threshold is 83 degrees C, at which time it'll throttle to protect itself. Something that it seems older M.2 SSDs didn't really have. That was a big problem. And the NVMe spec or NVMe standard, the 1.3 standard fixed all of that. Now. The gaming mode, when enabled, allows you to control, enable, or disable that NVMe standard, the 1.3 standard, so that it provides or doesn't provide the extra late or the lowered latency. And then also with that lower latency comes more power. More power means more heat. Now, when I tested with gaming mode on, honestly, I didn't notice any performance increase. I did notice though only a two degree temperature increase. So before with gaming mode off, it was 70 degrees. With gaming mode on, it was 72 degrees. You know, I wanted to figure out why all this standard and all this uh, gaming mode, what was it, it was all about? Because honestly, I didn't see any kind of performance increase. The scores, you know, uh, Crystal Disk and Edelweiss were not that different. Some instances they were a little bit lower, but I tested each three times. So sometimes it went up, sometimes it went down, and it was pretty much average with gaming mode off and on. So I asked Western Digital, you know, what's it about? But then I also read, you know, looking into more of the drive itself before I even received it, I saw everywhere that it said that this is an in-house build controller. I don't want to hear that. I want to know exactly what controller it is. So in doing some digging, taking off the label, looking at the numbers, taking pictures, which I'm showing you here, I found that the controller is a SanDisk 20-82-007-011, which is not surprising due to the fact that Western Digital bought SanDisk back in 2016, just in case you didn't know. Now, going back to Western Digital, I asked Western Digital, you know, why all the secrecy and all that good stuff. And they said that the controller was engineered from the ground up, specifically architecture to help maximize performance for NVMe based SSDs. So that goes in line as well with the NVMe standard 1.3. So they wanted to take advantage of that. And it, maybe that's something that Sandus was working on ahead of Western Digital. But regardless of that, you know, NVMe, I'm sorry, Western Digital was awesome with this. They helped answer a lot of the questions that I just didn't know. And they were actually a little impressed when I found that on the chip. So, and I've been holding it wrong the entire time. But anyway, so 
that's some of the performance and temperatures and all that good stuff on the drive. Now, what I've seen with this drive that you don't see with other drives, or at least I hadn't seen with other drives, they mentioned the read speed is up to 3,470 megabytes per second. So in Crystal Disk, I almost reached 3,500 megabytes per second. That's amazing. Usually when people state a speed, it's supposed to go up to this speed. It doesn't hit it. Then on the right side, it's said to go up to 3,000 megabytes per second. Now, if you look back at Crystal Disk, again, over their stated speed. So Western Digital took the high road here rather than saying it'll reach 3,500 megabytes per second or 3,020 megabytes per second. They stated a little bit lower. So nobody can call them out. Hey, that's BS. No, they're 100% honest about it. I'm impressed by that. I think that's awesome. But anyway, those are my two cents on the WD Black SN750, one terabyte NVMe, M.2 PCIe SSD. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I also have links to this and everything in my system below, just in case you guys are interested what I'm using. Maybe you wanna buy it, or maybe you just wanna compare prices and specs maybe to something else. I have that all below. As always, please do click like and subscribe. It helps me out a ton. Iggy out. See you guys. Products in this video were provided to the author to do review. All opinions are 100% authors and authors alone.